Bob Nagy, AB5 and back with an interesting item today. This won't be a very long video. When I'm working portable, I always like to use resonant antennas. And I always tell people, don't use a loaded up antenna with a tuner when you're out there with 5, 10 watts, something like that, because you'll receive, or you'll receive, you know, your transmit efficiency is not as good. So you need every advantage you can get. So I use folded dipoles generally, or a folded dipole when I'm out portable, and do a lot of portable work. Uh, but the downside is, you're stuck in one band, and you pull that thing out of the bag and with the spreaders and the wire, it's always knotted up and it takes me about 10 minutes to get the thing, you know, several curses to get it un untwangled and uh, get it up over the tree and everything, and it works fine. But I work a lot of people with N-fed long wire style antennas. It's just, I know it's a single long wire with a, an impedance matching transformer at the end, and um, it's extremely popular right now for portable work and POTA activation and such. So we're going to take a look at the real R-E-E-L POTA, P-O-T-A, bull antenna. That's really a nice assembly of this type of antenna. And uh, lands up this thing is resonant on multiple bands at once. They say 10, 15, and 20. And we're going to reel it in and out a little bit and check the swirl and see what else we can get out of it. Uh, but uh, let's see, uh, take a look at what this uh, little bugger can do. So here's the tools we're going to use today. The real potable antenna, a hunk of coax, and I'm going to use a bungee cord to secure the end of it to our tree over here. The end of the wire that you're pulling out of the reel has this nice handy dandy clip on it. it makes it really easy to uh, hook onto whatever you're pulling it up to the tree or high location with. So here's our lash up in the backyard. Just use a bungee cord going over this crepe myrtle tree over here. About a 20-25 foot hunk of coax on it. They suggest 50, but I noticed I even used a little jumper cable to my radio when I'm camping and it worked just fine too. They suggest the sloper design, so basically, out past the garden there, just looking at popping it up over a tree at about 20-25 feet. Probably pretty typical camping arrangement there, and I used the David and Goliath method there with a rock and a string and just wound it around really, really fast and threw it up over a branch. So reeled all the way out and pretty darn close to the ground. I'd probably do better off the ground in an actual camping site. On 20 here I'm showing a resonant frequency uh, well under 1.5 at 13,946 and as we go up the band here yeah, got a little swir there. I'm going to try reeling it in a little bit and see if we can trim that out on 20. Showing the same on 15 when we're fully reeled out Resonant frequency is a little bit low here, and we go up, and we get over 1.5 at about 21.247. So we're making a partial use of the band there. Uh, impedance looks good. Let's try the next one out. It's pretty swell on 10 meters there. Right at 28.4 is our lowest SWR, 1.2, 2.5, something like that. Very nice. I'm going to reel a little bit in and see if we can do a compromise there. I reeled it in just slightly, and... Uh, now 15 is just perfect. You know, we're really pretty much right in the center of the band. Let's check 10 over here. Yeah, look at that. Still really nice. So you can just reel in a little bit of this thing and move it around the band as you please there. Nice. And of course, in actual use, I'd probably be another 10 feet off the ground. Um, and of course you get a little bit of frequency lowering effect when you're close to the ground. So as I've installed it, it seems that um, 20 meters is happiest if you reel in about 3, 4, 5 feet of it and get your swir down a little bit in the center of the band and 15 and 10 are happiest pretty much full out and you can adjust it for what part of the band you want your low SSWR by just reeling in a little bit on those bands. And looky here with a little bit of uh, half decent grounding, it looks like 24 megahertz works as well. So play with that a little bit and see what you can get. Let's do a little test here on the VNA from 12 to 31 megahertz and look at that. Three nice clean dips right where we want them. Now the radiation pattern off of a long wire antenna tends to be a flatter bow tie than a dipole. So instead of the classic X pattern through the center, the radiation is closer to in line with the wire. That would be there and there, so and of course the opposite directions. Of course, it came with a custom chair and everything. And well, well, this uh, 
antenna certainly works great on receive and I have used it to make several QSOs when I was out camping and you're wondering what radio this is oh wait for my next review in about a week well, I think this is the coolest thing since uh, sliced bread here very low background noise level. I know the no noise level in my area and it's generally higher than this. So this is a this is a low noise antenna because on my hex beam I've got like four or five you know S units of noise just sitting there midday. Alpha Bravo five Nancy A B five November. Bravo 5 November, you are 5 and 9, it's a Kilo 7459, this is Kilo Echo 2, Echo Tango, please stand by for Wayne as soon as you can remember his call sign. Alpha Bravo 5 November, this is November 3, Charlie Delta Foxtrot, same mark number, same signal report. Roger, Roger, absolutely great. Uh, I'm here in the nation's first national park, but not activating today in uh, K0038. Uh, Hot Springs National Park will be activating soon, but uh, thanks for being out there, guys. And uh, you're, you're both 5'9 here, AB5, Nancy. What was that park number again? Hot Springs, was it? Yeah, it's Hot Springs National Park. It's K0038, but I'm not activating today, Roger. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Appreciate the call. Now, tomorrow we'll be at... Uh uh, Fontana Dam and Appalachian Trail, so look for us around the same time. All right, good deal. And we're running about 18 watts into the end-fed long wire, that reel, the thing that reels out of a chalk line, Roger. Nah, no kidding. <laughs> That's a Roger, so <laughs> thanks for the report. 7-3 for now. Let me get your call again. Oh, Alpha Bravo 5 Nancy, and the antenna is 5 feet off the ground to about 20 feet off the ground, Roger. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, we're running just a vertical mounted off the uh, rail of the truck here. IC7300, 100 watts, looking at a gorgeous lake. What's for us tomorrow, QSL? QSL. Hey, have fun, guys. AB5 Nancy. Talk to you tomorrow, 7 3. Yeah, this Q thing works, huh? So, you may be a crafty ham like me and think, well, I'll just make one of these things out of a, you know, a chalk line and a high ratio bell and build it on the back and everything. But then I realized, because I've done work on electric generating windmills, that there has to be a slip ring assembly in here. You're reeling this wire out, yet remaining in contact with a hot conductor and ground to the transformer matching unit. How are they doing that? How did he design this so that he gets electrical contact as you're swiveling this thing around? That is the complex heart of this thing, and I'm not going to take the little warranty sticker off, uh, warranty sticker to find out how he did it, because I'm going to honor it and just uh, suggest you all get one of these. This is a really cool ham invention. So I guess really it's uh, two thumbs up on this reel out and fed long wire antenna for boat operation. I'll put the links on where to uh, take a look at it and maybe order one for yourself. And uh, I'm, all right, I'm a convert. I'm gonna start using this thing because the uh, folded dipoles are a real pain in the neck to deploy. So until next time, take it easy. Thanks for watching.